Welcome to Warblog. Today, we're hopefully going to be speaking into the microphone. Um, it's really throwing me not being able to sort of record anything properly. Um, it's further to say that um, I can no longer use the A, Z, the A, X, C, and F buttons on my keyboard. So um, I've got an external keyboard. So I bought another computer, but only because I couldn't use the keyboard. And now I've got an external keyboard, and it's just. But I did find this little jack that goes into a USB, in which I plug this, plug the microphone in. So hopefully this will work. Now I'm going to play. Obviously I've done the bear pigs last time, so I'm going to play this Aleppo one now. And again, it's another toughie because um, to be quite honest, I haven't got a clue what's going on here. Um, I think the first thing to sort of, I mean, it's a very old school, it's probably got, um, it's probably got lots of stuff that I sort of don't really remember. Right, so it's all the black counters versus, and the green ones versus everyone else. I mean, the green ones with the lines through them, Free Syrian Army, and all these other black ones. So we should be able to figure that out. So black ones, lines, so let's jump into play mode. I like that. Okay. I've also done a lot of background work on the, um, the actual caching. We're in play mode at the moment, so it's slightly different. Not, not, not to worry. Um, so, what did we say? Because we're super excellent, we didn't just say something like all the black ones and the ones with green and white stripes, did we? We actually used them by the names because we're professional and excellent like that. But, um, so anyway, we got, I remember this, hassling the airbase. So obviously we've got a line. Now the thing to bear in mind with this scenario is that there you go and I do remember all of this um, but the, the, well, I want to think about in mind <laughs> and sort of bearing on the fact that I remember it I remember when this this was like one of the earliest scenarios I did I mean it's you know it's on the second to last page probably still on yeah, I think it's basically it's it's not on the last page, so we're this is like the eleventh or twelfth scenario, and um, this was happening. I can't remember the date now. It's not on there, but um, now it's all history, which is quite strange. But the, one of the worst, well, one of the interesting things about this whole Aleppo thing is that it went on. It quite it changed quite a lot. I didn't do a lot of scenarios for it, which to some extent maybe I wish I had. Um, just because you, you capture it in all its nuances, but um, it was so complicated. But I did a massive one that is so incredibly complex that it'd be impossible to play. It makes this one look really simple. Um, so now, obviously, there's the sort of enclave there, and then that was the sort of the important bit. Uh, I'm really not sure what, exactly what happened, but I'm pretty sure the Kurds took some of these northern areas. So I mean, to be quite honest. I, I'm not sure how far I'm gonna, through I'm going to play in this because I think the thing to do is to sort of possibly really try and determine a, a sort of strategy on on what can what what can happen. Now, one thing to bear in mind: we've got sort of battalions here and even regiments, and you know these regiments are like four, four, three. Now it's all relative, so it doesn't really make a lot of difference. Um, you, you know, <laughs> what's that? A division with ten. Um, you can see how far back it was because um, they, well, I, I don't even like that. There would be companies. It's all relative, so it doesn't really matter. But um, it's very interesting, really. And I don't know, really, what to say or do. Um, I mean, what I'm still thinking of, well, obviously, there's going to be a strategy somewhere. And so historically, that the, they weren't just sort of fighting on every front. There would be initiatives. There was a lot of attrition going across on every front, 
But the difference between this and reality is, you know, immense. You just couldn't really model it in the same way. I don't think any game really could, because a lot of what went on was more politics. It was more sort of, a, you know, the things were being left static, mainly for, I would imagine, humanitarian reasons, um, with sort of, you know, a lot of, a, a lot of so-called negotiations going on. Uh, neither side really wanting to back down, but I don't think it was sort of like you know it wasn't like casino or uh, you know sort of like a major city battle that was sort of ongoing day in day out. There was sort of just lots of bits happening. So what I'm sort of getting to, you know, I think you know to play it, you sort of have to sort of almost do that negotiation yourself, but also maybe sort of think, well, it's a Syrian player to go first. So obviously we've got all these units. And, and, you know, the sort of thing to do is to, is to maybe sort of think, well, what, what would you want really to do on that first, on, on your first turn? And, and you could sort of say, well, okay, we're going to have one go each. And I think that's how I'm going to do it, actually. Um, not so much because I think that's maybe how it would be done. But I think it's just an interesting exercise. Um, so you might, the Syrian might, might say, okay, well, we'll go and, as our first attack, as our first operation. And, and then we're going to... We're going to basically try and push this line here, you know. So, so essentially, somehow join up with these to create a full front line. That's our objective. Now, you could say that for the first, you know, five turns, you do one operation, and then once you get the hang of it, you could do two. You can say, well, that's what we're going to do. So, nothing else is going to change. And I will do that just to make it simple, because you know, I haven't got my head around it. Um, and I think it's a game that although it looks quite simple, it's not. You know, all these sorts of games, I always sort of think to myself, well, what you really need to do is you need to spend a good hour or more actually just looking at all the permutations, and a lot of it just comes down to maths. For example, um, you could say, well, what's in there? Well, we know we've got, well, so I don't even do toes like that anymore. I mean, 14 defense that's how they were being done might have to change that but they've got basically eight defense in there in I think that's um, dense urban which I think is going to be tripled so it's going to be 1624 so you know to, to actually get an attack against that we'd need 10 I don't know that's them 14 15 16 17 18. 1920, 21, 22. So we couldn't even get a one-to-one -one with all of this. So we'd have to sort of put in some artillery. Now I'm not going to start doing that because I don't want to start getting compl to, to sort of make it any more complex. But the thing is, I don't really see any artillery. Um, you know, which might be sort of maybe an oversight. Now I will, I will say at this point, you know, what, I'm not going to do anything now. Um, but in theory. And with all, in, in, in all the other games, I could come back and fine tune them. You know, for example, if I was to come back and review this, and I can actually download everything into a spreadsheet and modify things a lot more efficiently. Um, but, you know, I might change, every, scale everything down so it's companies, battalions. So these would be companies, and this might be a battalion. Uh, just change things, scale things down, but maybe put a bit more artillery, because there doesn't seem to be much artillery, and I think that was key. There doesn't seem to be any air power. So, you know, these, these are things that could be, you know, further, further developed. I mean, this is eight artillery. It's fair enough, but it's eight defence. And def artillery doesn't have a defence like that. It's a regiment, so you have three. But really, it shouldn't even be a regiment. It should probably be more of a battalion, which give them a defence of two. Um, but it's in there with a, a big infantry unit. So that's going to be really tough, which was the idea. But so I'm picking holes in sort of, you know, the actual game to a certain extent, but, you know, with the caveat that, you know, the whole idea is I can come back to it and change it, but I probably won't. But this is a particular sort of favourite of mine, because it was one of the first ones. Um, and it was, it was one of the first ones, and I think, I don't think I've got it on there anymore, but it, it used to be part of the banner, I think, on my Facebook page. It was this, um, and it looked really quite...
quite snazzy and complex and of course it doesn't look that, that way now but so what I'm going to do, I'm going to, I'm going to try and do what I said, so that's my operation um, and whatever we're going to, it's really going to work, so obviously I want to sort of somehow maintain this line so I've, I've moved those but I think I, I could possibly using it as an anchor I can move these mechanized units into there or there. What I'm going to do is leave them where they are. <laughs> well, there you go. Look at that. He's only got he's got zero movement on the first turn. This shows you how far back it was. Quite often on the first turn, due to the way things were set up, things didn't have any movement. So you could almost say that those plans have been scuppered. So I'm going to say that that's me forming that line. So that's my operation completed. Now when I go on to the next turn, so that's another thing. I will fix that actually. Um, so now it's the Syrian rebels and Isil turn. So that was my first operation there, and obviously that went pear shaped. Um, but what's the uh, Silver Rebels and Issel side going to do? So let's just reiterate the front line. Which is like that. Hmm. So, what could they do? I wonder about taking that base out. It's going to be pretty tough. They've got, oh look, they've got an isolated unit up there, look. There you go. You see, that's a bit tough. I think what we could do is try and push on this unit here, but these are a bit tough here as well. Look at that, 24. Can move these up. They don't really have any sort of distinctive push anywhere. Right, what I'm going to do. RSS and Pinterest now, <laughs> for all it's worth. I'm going to move these units. That's it. Not moving very fast. <laughs> so much for a, a lightning opening. Okay, so it's now the um, Syrian turn again. Now they might. I think they might say we accomplish that. And what we're going to do is possibly concentrate on something else because they're incredibly weak up here.
is a no, really. I think we might try that. There. It's right there. So we can take it from there. There. And there. What do we want to do with these shite militias? I think we'll bring them in this way. They won't get there, but we can get into our sand. So. Why has he not got any movement? Oh no, freeze. <laughs> oh, <aren't they? laughs> See, that's the very thing. Is. We have lots of fun in the real uh, Aleppo scenario. We should win. I mean, that's going to be 5, 6, 7, 8 to 1. Good dice rolls. We'll push them back. Can't really move in there, but that's our operation successful. I prefer actually doing it this way on for the video because with a game like this, you know, I can spend the whole turn just doing one thing, and, and I think it sort of actually makes for an interesting set of rules. So much so that you could almost sort of you could almost introduce it as a set of rules, you know, and even give it a name, sort of, you know, operation. Operations. Well, <laughs> I was suddenly operationally bound, bound by operations, um, because it was sort of was more like that from memory. I mean, I wasn't there, but from recording, you know, they weren't doing everything everywhere. But there would be sort of initiatives here, or there would be a push there, and you know, I think it sort of and it makes for a more entertaining game. I think so. so now the Syrian rebels. No. So they've been pushed out. Do they want to take that ground again? What we're going to do? We're going to try and fight back there. No, oh, these are free Syrian, free Syrian army. So they're on that, sort of on our side. Right. Right, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to move one unit back into there. And I'm going to move two into there. I'm going to move two into there, those two. And then obviously he's going to move into there. And then I'm going to try and take out this unit. So that's my operation, it's a push there and to take that. So he's depressed. I'm gonna move the toe into there. I don't like those toes, they don't, they don't really make sense to me. So you can't move any further. And let's see what we can do here. You know, we've got all these people here. I think they can. I wonder what happens if I use those those guys. Let's see what happens. Two to one. Well, there are four. One, two, three, four. Four to one. Four to one and a dark roll of one. I'll go under there. <laughs> I thought they were 
I thought it was an error. So, that's quite dynamic really. Because what it actually does if you look, it turns this almost into a pocket. Because if we can split that line, we obviously hold well all of that and from this side all of that, with the exception of that. So that would be joined. Hmm. Do we have any movement? Probably not. No movement. One movement, but I don't think it's going to get into there. They're on the road, aren't they? But they don't really want to weaken that position at all. Hmm. Okay, well, I'll give it one more go each. Now everyone's starting to dig in. So the Syrians want to sort of stop that. So we don't really have enough troops. Got two in there. So what I'm going to do for them is move these there and these there. One of them. There we go. Okay. So the rebels. Do they want to try that again? What can we do with these? And these. I think we're going to try and. We mm, must get rid of these. Well, we could push these south. And try and attack these. We're going to do this. It's going to be quite a big operation. It's all part of the same thing. It's going to basically push south from here. So, what's going to happen? These units are going to come south. So, possibly one there one there. These ones are going to go south. But more importantly these ones are going to go there and there and push these ones into there and these are going to go there and there. And that's sort of one operation. Pushing it, but um, that's what I'm doing. So, OK. 
Okay, let's see what we can do against this. Push them back. It's quite interesting, really. You know, the dynamics on that work. Well, it's nearly half an hour, and um, that's all I've uploaded this. <laughs> See if the audio is better. Fortunately, I didn't have to click any keys. Um, Uh, I've got a, a, a keyboard thing, but it, it, because I'm recording on this, it appeared on the other screen. I've got two screens. Um, so that's that, really. Um, yep, I hope you enjoyed that. I, I hope, I've never thought of it like that before, but I think um, it certainly gives you a lot more scope if you're playing another person in the same room. You can sit there and say, okay, this is my operation and this is what I'm going to do. And I think it, it gives you a lot more scope to react um, I mean, I know in certain games, sort of Napoleonics, you have, you can only get so many activations, even sort of World War Two, you get a certain number of activations, and that's what you can do. Um, and you can almost sort of apply that as a rule, that you can only have one sort of primary activation that, you know, has to be, make sense. So you could have, you know, an umpire, so to speak, um, you know, Either, you know, you, you just between yourself or yourself and another person arbitrate an umpire to apply common sense as to what one operation would be for one common purpose um, as opposed to everything. But I think that's quite an interesting way to play it because it, it means the turnaround is a lot faster, but it also means that you can sort of almost, you can almost feel that sort of, you, you, you know, that daily change because there weren't massive changes there was just sort of little bits here and there you know they were sort of you know today the whoever these people were you know combined operation between the army and Mujahideen and the Free Syrian army um, the uh, Jabhat al Shamia uh, units pushed some uh, Ba'ath units out of this area of um, northwestern Aleppo and that would be the headline, and that would be the operation, um, and that would have been what happened. Uh, and obviously they're going for places where they can do that with these relatively small units, because going against these armoured units is going to be quite a lot different. So, um, yeah, um, I hope that strikes you as being interesting. And I'll just reiterate, I mean, it, it's it's actually quite a complex game, but it's nowhere near as complex as the um, the other Aleppo one is, or some of the others. And I think it's one of the things about these hex counter games that they are quite complex, especially for sort of like, you know, how I consider it to be easy to play games. I know that other games on the market just have thousands of units. And you don't really consider things as, as, as intently, but here, you know, I mean, it's, there's still a hell of a lot to think. I mean, there's all that thinking there and there and what about this unit and down here, you know, and and one of those bigger games, you just get into a sort of a, a process like a, you, you know, an endless chain of just moving things because they, you know, oh, we've got these, just move them and either pushing whatever into some sort of combat. And, and that, that always seems to me to be a bit disappointing as, you know, in requiring a sort of lack of thinking. It's like playing chess, all of a sudden, all the pieces are the same, you know, playing chess with checkers, the rules of checkers, you know, and doing it quickly, you know, I think if you're going to play a game, you can sort of, you know, in chess, you can, I'm not sure what the time limit is in competitive chess, but generally speaking, you can think for a good five or ten minutes on a turn, and I think that's what you should be doing, um, and I think that's what makes, um, you know, this this game slight, slightly different to, say, some of the, the, the other sort of 
bigger computerized games where you've really got to just be doing a lot quite quickly uh, just to get through you know the 200 turns <laughs> that there is with you know 5,000 counters um, and there are, I mean, there are small wall block games but you know and this doesn't really look that big but it is it is, it is quite significant so um, uh, I, you know, so, but with that sort of operational perspective and approach to it, it, it should play a little differently if that appeals to you. But if you want to do it all in one go each turn, then um, then you, you can do that as well, I guess. I think this is more convincing or more satisfying from a role play perspective because you can almost sort of see you know, you, you know the ebb and flow of of daily actions as opposed to sort of I think you could probably achieve quite a lot more if you moved everything all in one go. Or at least sway the balance because you probably lose dress, you know, over here fairly significantly, fairly early on. When it's played this way, you know, this place, which it was, it was static for months, um, and it would be because your focus is on doing your operations over here, and it's just sitting there until you take the time to deal with it, and you won't necessarily win because they're quite hard either way. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed that, and remember, you can play it, you can print it out and play it, you can play it with your pals across the internet and um, everything you print it out blow it up put it on your wall and throw darts at it if you like um, whatever floats your boat i'll speak to you later cheerio